Few musicians in Midwest emo are as beloved as American football. Their self-titled debut firmly established them as essential to the genre. And they remained popular enough that, despite breaking up in the 90s, they reformed 15 years later. They become so well known that many can recognize them from a single riff. Or a rundown, chipped white house. Today, we're going to be talking about that home. Its overnight fame, questionable reviews, and seemingly unavoidable fate of demolition. This is the story of the American Football House. This video is sponsored by Helix. Helix makes premium mattresses and bedding, custom fit to your needs, and shipped free right to your door. Everyone sleeps differently, so Helix has you take a sleep quiz to match your body type and sleep preferences. I'm a side sleeper, so Helix set me up with a sunset mattress. I've been using Helix mattresses now for over two years. I'm currently on my second Helix mattress now with a Glaciotex upgrade because I like to sleep cool. And on the new mattress, I've been using the Helix frame and foundation, which are superior to box springs for foam mattresses like Helix. And with this whole setup, I've been having the best sleep of my life. Helix delivers your mattress right to your door with free shipping in the US. Comes rolled up in a box and is easy to set up. And to make sure you love your Helix mattress, there's a 100 night sleep trial. You also get a 10 year warranty. And there's also financing options and flexible payment plans. Right now, Helix is running a 4th of July sale. So this is a great time to upgrade your mattress. You can get 25% off your purchase for a limited time. Just check out the Helix site for more details. American Football formed in the late 90s at the University of Illinois. Their first album released in 1999 to critical acclaim, in large part for the opening song, Never Meant. Its dreamlike sound and confessional lyrics made it an instant hit on college radio. In spite of this though, their run was remarkably short-lived. As college ended, life took the friends separate ways, causing them to split up months later. The unfulfilled promise of this band was taunting as years later they would go on to achieve cult status. And that status only grew as American football made best of lists year after year. And with such little material, the fans latched onto whatever they could including the album's only visual. The cover is an upward shot of a house in Urbana, Illinois. It's located at 704 West High Street, within walking distance of campus. This proximity made it a popular choice to rent among undergrads. Strangely enough though, no one in the band actually lived there. The photo was taken by Chris Strong, a friend of theirs who lived in the basement. But they ended up inside the house a lot anyway for frequent parties and DIY shows. Those memories led the house to be chosen as a symbol of their college lives. There's something about it that captures the essence of American football perfectly. It feels familiar in a small town America kind of way. Strong has attempted to put this into words himself. For me, a lot of the stuff in the album artwork has to do with Urbana in general instead of specifically that house. It's super dark and kind of run down, but in a great way. There's dirty corners, there's a nice Urbana thing about Urbana that I can't put my finger on. The atmosphere and the band's elusiveness would make this site iconic. The house became synonymous with the band as somewhat of an unconventional mascot. And that was while, mind you, it was still being used as a college residence. To everyone else, it was no different from any other student housing. Most undergrads only stayed there for a year or two, which meant that it went up for sale pretty often. Occasionally someone would rent it knowingly, which typically would lead to shows and emo dance parties. Now, it's worth pointing out that this house wasn't exactly a great place to live. The layout was bizarre. The hallway to the kitchen was so small that opening up a pantry made it inaccessible from the living room. It was also just poorly constructed. As Strong recalled, the basement flooded like crazy. And while there were small renovations, these conditions in general never really improved, which Strong discovered firsthand in 2014. That year, the band reunited in limited capacity. They would perform live to promote a special deluxe edition. But this reissue was so successful that it ultimately inspired a full-fledged return. Following their revival, Strong was hired to direct a music video for Never Meant. This took him back to his old stomping grounds. He was given a tour by then-resident Jessica Knowles, who called it really shitty. Good shitty, maybe, but still bad. The ceiling was falling apart and the basement still flooded. But as a lifetime fan, she found it endearing. Jessica had signed the lease without knowing it was the real deal. Upon realizing this, she broke in a few days early to explore. That was the power of being associated with such a popular act. People were just willing to put up with these conditions. 
In fact, many went out of their way traveling across the country to visit this emo landmark. In 2016, Vice published an article documenting this phenomenon. The author Sean Newman notes that the sidewalk was covered in marks. There were attempts to find the exact spot the photo was taken. It was such a regular occurrence that one way or another, everyone who lived there knew about the band. While most responded kindly, the attention wasn't always appreciated. James Onderdonk was one such resident who lived there from 2012 to 2013. He became so frustrated that he began lying to the tourists. He would tell them that the real house was actually up the block. He recalled, One time I was sitting on the porch and some guy came by and asked if he could have his friend take a picture in front of the house. Presumably, there's a picture out there somewhere of a person pointing at the house and smiling, with me in the background drinking beer and scowling. Bear in mind, this was still early on. That's before the address was added to Atlas Obscura, and before it was designated as a place of worship on Google Maps. The Hard Times even made an article satirizing the trend, Stop taking pictures of my fucking house. But tourism was only one part of the fiasco, as the problem went both ways. More and more students began attempting the rent there for the sake of living in the American football house. It's what could only be described as an arms race of college kids fighting for their chance to briefly be able to call it their own. There were heated arguments every year the place opened up. Even random Twitter users started to watch its listings. Real talk, when I was in college, the American Football House went up for rent, and I actually almost dropped out of college to move into it with a group of strangers from the internet. So the owners capitalized this and gradually priced it higher. You had to pay a premium for what the band themselves called the shitty house. In 2018, it listed at $1,600 a month. Ah! The price raised to $1,850 by 2020. What the fuck? That same year, a follow-up on the emo tourist was published in the Daily Illini, an independent student newspaper for the university. They interviewed Caitlin Kengel, who shared at the time of two roommates. It seems that even with this demand, the owners were still unwilling to do proper maintenance. Because somehow, her review is worse than any of the other accounts that existed before her. It was gross. There were mice in the basement. The basement floor would grow mildew all the time. The shower head in the upstairs bathroom faced the short way of the tub, and if the shower curtain was hanging over the edge just a little bit, water would flood the sloped bathroom floor and leak into the kitchen. If that wasn't enough, her bedroom was right above the front door, which meant that she resided in the very same window seen on the album cover. Not only that, but the photo on the album cover was taken at night. That meant that late night visitors would wait for the sunset and for her bedroom light to turn on. You know, so they can get a more accurate tribute photo. And at this point, now you've got people traveling internationally to see this landmark. But like so many before her, she was able to overlook it as a fan. The home became a catalyst for new memories and even connections. Caitlin once found a CD on her porch from a band named Camp Edwards. It had been left there by the songwriter without any much expectations. But she wound up enjoying the album so much she invited them to come play a show. There was just something about this house that encouraged only small but meaningful interactions. To this day, Sean Newman continues to get messages about the house because of his article. They're usually for people who lived there or visited during their childhood. He posted one such email to Twitter in late 2022. Sean, swear to God, decided to look up my great-grandmother Bessé Ray's old house. Remember the house from when I was around 5 to 12 years old in the 60s? I'm 64 now. Anyway, due to the magic of Zillow and Google Street View, I am positive the house was 704 High Street in Urbana. My father lived with his grandparents there while at the University of Illinois, after he was in the army in Korea. Bessie Ray baked up a storm in that kitchen. She always had renters upstairs. I remember that front hallway, the stairs to the left, and the French doors on the right leading to the living room. I am listening to American football right now on Napster. Okay, I'll be honest, I never heard of them before this. Who knew? Thanks for the memories via your Vice article. Michael and Adam Thies both worked at Polyvinyl, the label behind American football. Through ancestry tests, they discovered that their great-great-grandfather was one of the house's earliest residents. He died inside the house in 1931. Michael reflected, it's totally bizarre. I feel connected to it because of my personal family history, but also just having grown up in Champaign-Urbana. Inevitably, you're going to end up in a basement of a house that looks like that. It always felt familiar to me. There's so many families in that community with ties to that specific abode. From the present-day undergrad to the 60-year-old recontextualizing his childhood, it's strangely ubiquitous. Even without the album, it had become a relic due to its construction back in 1893, and it stood the test of time. So you can only imagine how worrying it was when the owner started planning to sell the property. On March 22, 2023, 
A post was made to r slash UIUC by PooGirl1003. Prepare to say goodbye to the American Football House. She explains that an agency was buying all of the properties on that block. They are going to tear them down in favor of building apartments. And the comments someone casts out. A friend of mine told me he knows the owners of the house and they are big AF fans and have no plans to sell it. To which Pooh Girl retorts, The people who owned the American Football House also owned our house and sold all of them last summer. So there is a genuine concern that this landmark was going to be demolished, putting over a century of history at risk. And given that most of the people interested in preserving it were broke college students, all hope seemed lost. That is, until a surprise announcement was made by the band less than two months later. On May 5th, 2023, Polyvinyl issued a press release announcing that American Football had bought the American Football House. Built in 1893, the home has become a historical monument to not only the band, but every fan who's listened to their era-defining debut that established its quaint facade as iconic Midwest imagery. When we heard in the fall of 2022 that the house was for sale, we made a pact with our friends to protect the house from developers and likely demolition. A few days ago, we held true to this promise and formally signed the closing papers, preserving both the space and its unique legacy within the community that shaped its existence. In the nearly 25 years since American Football's release of LP1, this white clapboard house has become one of music's biggest monuments, receiving visitors from across the world on their emo pilgrimage. It has hosted decades of house parties and punk shows all around the property, from a half-pipe in the backyard to the back porch to the basement. In 2020, it was the official venue for Never Meant, one of the first virtual concerts hosted in Minecraft during COVID, bringing fans together at a time when they simply couldn't be. When American Football reunited in 2016, their long-awaited LP2 cover donned the house's interior staircase and invited fans inside by our visiting breakout track Never Meant, with an official music video shot within its howled walls. The song's jangly opening riff is as recognizable as the house itself having been memed into infamy. Besides being a literal home to its many tenants throughout the years, the American Football House has come to represent a nostalgic dream of possibility and the beauty of the beginning. We could not let that dream go. Now, their statement doesn't clarify any plan, so it's not entirely clear what the future holds. Some have suggested that they should turn into an emo museum or an Airbnb, but so far it seems like nothing has changed, remaining a home for students at the University of Illinois. Maybe that's for the best. Part of the magic is that it's just a place for people to crash. That feels in some ways a lot more valuable than an exhibit, or an expensive bidding war. At the same time, I hope they finally get around to doing some of the necessary maintenance because you can't have these people breathing in mildew. But anyway, for now, that's the story of the American Football House. If you like this video, check out my video about Neutral Milk Hotel and Anne Frank and time travel. I'm out.